Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup. This evening I'm joined by... Dean. Steve. And we've just finished playing Stockpile, which is, as you might imagine, about trading stocks. So you can see there are a number of different uh, companies here. We've got Cosmic Computers, Bottom Line Bank, Leading Laboratories, etc. And there's different prices of the stocks. And as we go through the game, they're going to fluctuate quite a lot, in fact. Um, but the way you play the game is, at the start of each round, you're dealt a, uh, one sort of secret bit of information inside of trading, I think they call it, don't they? So I know that Epic Electric is going to go up by four, but no one else knows that. And they've each got their own pair of cards that they sort of look at. And then we get dealt um, some shares, which we're going to be handing out or sort of... Uh, putting on various different piles here. So in this case, I've got one Epic Electric share and one bottom line bank share. So I decide where I'm going to put them and you have to put one face down and one face up. So I might decide, you can see we've got some here already. I'm going to put my face, up, face down one there and my face up Epic Electric is going to go with the other one over there. Um, and everyone goes around doing the same thing. So Dean puts one face down, one face up. And we were actually playing with five players in this game. So you end up with quite a few cards out here. Uh, you'll notice that some of the cards, though, give you actions. So this one, if you manage to get it, will allow you to move one of the stocks down by two. And some of them I mean you have to pay money. You can see there's some trading fees. You have to pay 2000 for this one. So once everyone's um, put all the cards out, you then get your appropriate colored meeple and you stick it, you're kind of bidding on one of these piles. So let's say I particularly want this pile. Then I could bid sort of zero, one, whatever you want to here. And then Dean would put a meeple on somewhere else. And then Steve will put one, and we keep doing this, and if someone goes above you, you sort of get knocked off, and when it comes back to you, you have to go somewhere else. So then maybe I could go back here and knock Steve off again, and then he has to go somewhere else. And once everyone's placed them, so they're all on different piles, then you pay whatever the money is here, and you get the appropriate pile. Um, shares are sort of secret, so anything that's face down would stay face down. What did I get? Oh, another share, that's great. And so you add it to your kind of pile of st uh, shares, your stockpile, in fact. Uh, and then we, so everyone gets the things, we reveal the um, cards. Sell, sell first. Oh, you can get an opportunity to sell, of course. So if you want to at this point, maybe because you know some of these will tell you that the stock's going down. So you might be like, oh, this particular um, company is going to go down, so I'm going to sell my um, stock. Um, and you're just paying whatever the price is. So if you were to sell the leading labs, you get 3000 per share. Uh, so then everyone reveals in sort of order what's going to happen and the shares kind of move up and down uh, so the share price is going to vary in various different ways some of them go up, some of them go down so in this particular case because mine said Epileptic was going up by 4 it would go 1, 2 and if it gets to the end the stock value kind of doubles it drops back down to the space here but then any shares you have in Epic Electric, have I got any? Oh yes, I've got two. So the yellow ones here, oh, if I get the right ones, here we go. They move into your doubled pile and they become twice as valuable. So any shares here are worth twice the value printed on here. And then potentially it could carry on going up again. Uh, you've got to be careful though, because if any of these get down to the bottom and go bust, then you lose all the shares you have in that company. They Effectively, you've just wiped out. You get no money at all for those. Uh, so you carry on going around like that, um, trying to acquire more shares here, bidding them, you know, spending as little money as you can while using the information that you've been given. Uh, and after a few rounds, you kind of sell all your shares at the end. You also get majority, so whoever has the most in a particular uh, company gets a payout as well. And most money at the end wins. What do you think? Yeah, it's not bad. It's quite a light game. Um, it's got quite a bit to it. There's, there's a reasonable amount that's that's not known obviously because everybody's playing half of their cards face down. I quite like the fact that the companies themselves um, are different so some of the companies their share price is very volatile a move of one or two is a dramatic difference in price whereas some of the others their price is very very stable so you can risk the, on the risky shares and get burnt or alternatively make a killing on it or you can play fairly safe so you know it's got that share dealing thing in it do you do you play risky do you play safe so no it's quite a nice game Steve um, I have an aversion to share games in the past where it is a lot a lot of randomness effectively at the end of the round you do your stuff and then you flip some cards over and see what happens in this case because all the information is there at the start of the round I mean you, you've got only privy to a very small part of it but you can see what people are willing to bid on there's two blue cards in that pile but they're no one's bidding on them. Maybe maybe no one's got something that means blue's going to go up or someone's got something that means blue's going to go down. So you kind of get a bit more information than you've just got on your own kind of secret goal. And everything will change. It won't just be at the end of the round. 
just the red one changes. Everything changes, which is quite nice. Dean's right, the board has like a double side to it. Basically, the other side is all the all the companies are uniform, those are the particular side we play, which I recommend you do that anyway. Some of the companies fluctuate so much, they bust and boom and bust and split and whatever, and then there's one company that's plodding along up and down, hardly changing at all. Um, it's really nice, you can kind of push your luck. I, I realised I wasn't doing very well in the game, so I gambled, I sold some shares at the end, hoping they would go down, that someone would have a card to make them go down. They didn't, <laughs> everyone else made more money, and I'd already sold my shares, so... Um, it's nice like that, it is one of the best stock market type games I've played. Rating? Uh, 7 out of 10. Dean? Yeah, I think I'd give it a 7 out of 10 as well. Okay. Yeah, I've played quite a few of these different uh, stock trading games, and this one feels lighter than quite a few of the others, but as Steve says, it's nice that you have to pay attention to what other people are doing. If they're selling shares, you've got to think, why is he selling shares? Does he know the share price is going to go down? You can play with extra sort of special abilities, which is quite nice, which adds to it. Um, but I think it's a, a solid package uh, if you want a sort of light game to give you that stock trading feel. I think it does very well. I'd be also be on a 7 out of 10. All right, thanks for watching. That was Stockpile.